Inflation crisis in America, parents price gouged by payment processors, and National Cheeseburger Day. Today, I read an article on foxbusiness.com written by Kristen Altes, titled, American Workers' Wages Are Still Losing the Inflation Race, New Data Confirms. The author of this article referenced Bankrate's second annual wage to inflation index report, which found that since the beginning of 2021, U.S. prices have risen 20% compared to wages at 17.4% in the same time period. The author went on to say, the data indicates that the past 16 months of real wage growth has not been enough to offset the 25 months when prices rose disproportionately quicker than wages. Here are my thoughts. First, I hate to hear about this. Inflation in the past has caused so many headaches for countless Americans. Many are priced out of the housing market. It doesn't matter if we are talking about renting a house or buying one. Some people can't afford to do either anymore. The price of new and used vehicles have skyrocketed and so has the cost to maintain them. The cost of food, medication, and just about anything that people need to survive costs more. In my opinion, the Federal Reserve shouldn't be cutting rates this week. They should hold rates steady if they are truly committed to winning the war on inflation. That may result in some pain in other ways, but I'd rather see a bit of a correction in various asset types than to watch them attempt to keep everything propped up with rate cuts. But again, what do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share some of them with you. The first commenter said, it's still 2.4% inflation on top of 4% inflation, going back to 9% inflation. The price of cars has essentially doubled. Groceries are up more than 20%. Housing never came down. The next commenter said, this article points out the tip of the iceberg with shrinking wages. This has been happening for almost 25 years now. I remember a first line engineering manager's salary in the late 1990s. It was about $100,000 per year. Today, that salary would be between $125,000 and $140,000 on average. But you need about $200,000 per year to have the same quality of life you had in the late 1990s for a $100,000 salary. Real wages have been shrinking for all but very specialized people for a long time. You hear very little about that. The next comment came from someone who said, high inflation plus higher wages equals worthless money. It's a no-win situation either way. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, people's salaries haven't risen by 17% in three years in the private sector. This is absolutely ludicrous. They admit that car insurance has risen by that much in just a year. That's a significant cost for most middle-class families, and they are set to raise them significantly very soon. I'm curious, what do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I read another interesting article today. This one was on foxbusiness.com, written by Daniela Genovese, titled, Another Financial Burden Weighing on Parents, School Lunch Fees. The author referenced a report released by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau about how families are paying costly and hard to avoid transaction fees stemming from the payment processing companies that help school districts process children's school lunch payments. The report found that payment processors charge transaction fees of $2.37, or 4.4% of the total transaction on average. This happens each time money is added into a payment account. Here are my thoughts. I'm getting really old. When I taught public school decades ago, I don't think I paid that much for the school lunch as a teacher. Now, this is supposedly what some parents are paying just for a transaction fee. I hate to hear about junk fees being charged. It seems like junk fees are spreading to just about every industry. Take car dealerships, for example. Many are charging hundreds of dollars in dock fees. I didn't say a hundred dollars. I said hundreds of dollars. I have seen these fees as high as $750 at a dealership. What the heck is this for? Most people sign everything electronically now. Dealerships aren't buying reams of paper and toner anymore. This is just a junk fee that the dealerships can profit from in many cases. I hate to hear about junk fees impacting what parents pay for school lunches. 
If this is true, that's just wrong in my opinion. I think American schools need to step up their game when it comes to school lunches. Many schools provide processed food on a plastic tray. I watched a 2016 documentary put out by Michael Moore called Where to Invade Next. If you haven't seen this movie, I suggest you consider watching it. There was a segment where Michael Moore visited a school in France. Once a month, the school chef gets together with city and school officials and a dietitian to go over the school lunch daily menu. The school considers lunch a class. It is an hour-long class where students learn to eat in a civilized manner. They learn to enjoy healthy food and serve each other. They eat on real china and tables with tablecloths. They have a four-course meal, including a cheese course and dessert. The schools don't have any vending machines either. As I said earlier, American schools need to step up their game, but I'm guessing many won't. I'm not just talking about public elementary, middle, and high schools. I'm talking about colleges as well. Many colleges have food courts now that resemble what you'd see in a mall or an airport. Many of the options aren't all that healthy. Wouldn't it be great if all of our schools taught students how to eat healthy and how to have table manners? If students learned how to eat better food, think about how this could potentially alleviate some chronic diseases that are diet related in our country. I think it would be great if all of our schools turned lunch into a class like the school in France that Michael Moore visited. But again, what do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Here in America, many people love fast food. They'd rather eat their food out of a paper sack than sit down at a table with a white tablecloth with real china and silverware. Fast food loving Americans are in luck. I read an article on foxbusiness.com written by Pillar Arias titled, National Cheeseburger Day Sees Major Deals from Fast Food Chains. According to the author, McDonald's is offering 50 cent double cheeseburgers on Wednesday for National Cheeseburger Day, but the deal is only available in the McDonald's app. Burger King is giving out free cheeseburgers to Royal Perks members with any purchase on September 18th. Wendy's is offering a multi-day deal where customers get a one cent junior cheeseburger with any purchase, but you must use the chain's app. Well, there you go, my friends. If you want to mess with an app, you can save some money on food this Wednesday for National Cheeseburger Day. As for me, I'm tired of apps for everything in life. Take me back to the 1970s with my old rotary phone that I was accustomed to using. I bet some kids today wouldn't have the first clue how to use one of those. In many ways, life was simpler back then than it is today. In some ways, our food was healthier back then as well. Did you know Big Tobacco got into the food industry in the 1980s? There's research out there that you can find that discusses how tobacco companies got involved in the food industry and had success with hyper palatable foods rooted in the science behind addiction. It's really fascinating if you start reading about it. Understand any research can be flawed and I'm not pointing fingers at Big Tobacco because of that. I'm just saying this type of research exists. What do you think about everything? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. If you would like to become a channel member, there's a link in the description beneath this video. You can read more about the different membership levels. Please also check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.